And Nero says, and I quote, 2,000 years, eight weeks, <laughs> what? 12 days. 1,900 years, <laughs> four score and seven years ago, <laughs> the castle run in 12 parsecs. <laughs> Do you think Han Solo went to hell? Oh, yeah. Be- <laughs> he shot first. No. <laughs> Awful movie. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to God Awful Movies Live. Please welcome No Illusions. So I got a standing ovation from my wife there. That was great. <laughs> Welcome, as you may have heard, to God Awful Movies live in Toronto. <laughs> sorry, wait, sorry. And I'm, I have it on good authority that is not Toronto to rhyme with pronto. It is Toronto to rhyme with guano. It's your choice, not mine. Uh, Toronto? All right, no, I can do that. I'm from the South, yeah, I can do Toronto. And of course, joining me tonight in this international gam stravaganza, please welcome to the stage my good friend Heath Enright. <laughs> Is it water? Oh, okay, all right, all right. No, much I got better. it. I got it. Much better. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Oh, there's a, Andrew is very relieved. I texted him yesterday and I was like, I can come out as Justin Trudeau in a Halloween costume, right? Like, that's cool. (laughs) Decided against it. Speaking of outfits that probably should have been decided against. (laughs) Everybody's just having such a good time. It's a wholesome show so far, right? But unfortunately, also joining us tonight... (laughs) Put your hands together for my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. That's right. European style. Because we're in France. Half the time. <laughs> oh, so... Can I tell you something fun about this bit that we do? is that it started out as just a way to freak out my straight audience members, but now it's a little treat for my gay male audience members. Yeah. If you came with a gay man tonight, he is perfectly still right now. He has no idea what you're all laughing at. He's just like, the show rocks. See, normally this is where I would explain to the audience listening at home what was going on, but I don't want to. I just don't even want to. (laughs) Please... So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Journey to Hell. Yeah. Yeah. It's the story of you are Hitler. You're Hitler. Most people say that as an exaggeration. No, you're bad. Hitler's bad. Ty, you're Hitler. You're all going to hell. You're Hitler. That's the story. That is the movie, yeah. That's Christianity, apparently, too. I'm so, we saved such a good one for you guys. <laughs> good, of course, I mean in the sense of, of, of God awful. So, Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if your surf team is really into Jesus <laughs> and you just realized how much money you can save on sets with green screens and the set of a porn, <laughs> you will love this movie. This movie is the result of someone who heard three words of a street preacher's thing and was sold right away, right? <laughs> he was, they were like, repent or you'll go to hell. And he was like, I'm fucking in. I'm going to make a movie right away. They were like, do you want to know anything else about the religion? He was like, no! Already filming. <laughs> All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Normally I would, but I have to talk about something else really quick. I have to use this moment 
Canada. Yeah. Canada. Just bring it in for a second. So the Supreme Court justice uniforms you have. What the fuck is going on there? You, it looks like Mr. and Mrs. Claus doing like a strippy thing. That, that's your, like, I'm American and I'm making fun of your Supreme Court this week. That's insane. The picture of your Supreme Court looks like the headline should be like, Mall Santa Massacre. Yes. Cult reveals dark undertones. I would so take their Santa court. Oh my God. I would love the Santa court. Okay, so I'm going to steer us back into the movie here a little bit. I want to go with best worst tagline. The tagline of this movie is, and I quote, Jesus spoke more of hell than of heaven. <laughs> It's like, you know, it's just everybody forgets the horror movie aspect of their Lord and Savior, and this movie wants to remind us. Jesus is right behind you. <laughs> just him following you across a pool really slow. You're trying to swim across. He's, he's, got, the, he's got the cross behind yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gets his hand caught on a coat rack. Ah, oh, damn it. Ow. Ow. I'm going to go with best worst Break policy. Okay. We will be introduced to Hell's break policy in this film. Uh, spoiler alert, it is okay. Yeah, no. It's not bad. It's better than Amazon. Being in Hell. It's better than podcasting. Yeah. They didn't like, hey, you got to get Michael Marshall to come be in Hell for the time that you're not in Hell. Yes. <laughs> Bring Kara Santa Maria down to hell for a little while, and then you can be not in hell for a bit. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Weed is legal in Canada, so I need a break. But we'll be back in a spliff with all the surfer dude theology of Journey to Hell. And Demon Flap. And Demon Flap. And rest. (sighs) Hey, guys. What's all the commotion here? Oh, hey, Noah. Heath and I are getting in shape for the live show this week. We need all the strength and endurance we can get for all the physical bits we're going to do. Yeah, and the in-person japes. Exactly. Which is why I've carefully studied the movie for anything we might want to reenact. Right, like demon flaps. Or knee praises. Guys, Mm -hmm. if you want to get in shape, why not just try FitBod? Oh, what's... FitBod. FitBod's one-of-a-kind algorithm uses data to create a dynamic fitness plan just for you based on your personal goals, equipment, fitness level, and workout history. Wait, so I can use an app to work out? You sure can. FitBod just introduced a brand new app interface that's super easy to use and even has brand new HD video tutorials to make learning new exercises a breeze. And it integrates with your Apple Watch, Wear OS smartwatch, and apps like Apple Health, Fitbit, and Strava. It's true. I started using FitBod when they became a sponsor, and I love, I can tell it exactly what I have to work out with that day, whether I'm in a gym full of equipment or just trying to get a workout in my hotel room. Build your fitness habit and become a better version of yourself with FitBod. Get 25% off your subscription or try out the app for free when you sign up now at FitBod.me slash GAM. That's 25% off your subscription when you sign up today at FitBod.me slash GAM. All right, Noah, thanks. All right, Heath, ready? Yep. Flat. Flat. Wait, wait, so, wait, I thought you guys were going to use FitPod. Oh, no, we are. These are just for fun. Oh, okay. You want to do some flaps? Flap. Lord Satan, Lord Satan. Yes, Minion, what is it? It's the humans. They've, uh, well, they've captured us once again. So, uh, so what do you mean? It's this new movie, Journey to Hell. It portrays our likenesses exactly. How could this be? Usually the humans show us with the horns, tails, graphic horror. I know. Are you sure this isn't another scenario with the clowns uh, where, they, where they look like us, but it's it's actually a totally different thing? No, sir. This isn't like the clowns at all. Look, I have a still from the movie. My God, it looks just like us. Right? Curse you, Gene Simmons. You betrayed us with your stage betrayal. Hey, hey, somebody asked for me. Is, sorry, is Gene Simmons dead? I don't know, man. Who cares? Ouch. Wow. (laughs) And we're back for the breakdown. And before the movie even starts, we're going to open on a super topical quote from 
19th century English preacher Charles Spurgeon, quote, Charlie Spurge? <laughs> there are many in hell who are almost saved, end quote. The title right. card of this movie is God was this close not to burning you in hell forever. <laughs> yeah. Right. God's the airport security guy who got, like, drunk with power. Yes. All of a sudden, he's like, ooh, you've got, like, 3.5 ounces <laughs> of interracial marriage right there. <laughs> Your wife's, like, a 64th First Nation. That's eternal damnation. Well, if you put her in a plastic bag, like a clear <laughs> plastic, this seems bad. Moving on. Yes, it's rough. No, it's rough. When you're in Canada, you're doing ounce jokes. It's, it's tough. So... From there, as we get that little quote, and then we do, uh, we, we meet our group of surfer buddies. They're calling it a day. We're in, we established that we're in Los Angeles, California, yeah? and we use all the stock footage they could afford marked beach. Yep. And then we meet, we meet a group of people that are obviously supposed to be surfers that just got done surfing. And the immediate note in my, uh, that I wrote down, acting note, oh, it's going to be one of those movies. Yes. This movie smacks of that delicious combination of local actor who didn't know what they were signing up for and church youth group members. Yes. Right? It's based entirely on the wideness of the eyes, right? How hard they're <laughs> nodding when they're not saying their lines. <laughs> so, yeah, so they're hanging out. They're like, oh, that was a great day of surfing. And then a girl comes up and she's like, hey, has anybody seen Shane? He might be about to incite the incident. He also forgot that people who were just surfing would maybe be wet. <laughs> it's fine. The movie forgets a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the music was so good. <laughs> yeah, at this point, it was like made in Mario Music Maker. Absolutely, yeah. Right. Like Coupon Craig with a Casio. Yeah, yeah there you yeah. go. Very problematic. Yeah. But this movie's got places to be, damn it. So we cut from there to Shane's funeral. He drowned while surfing. Okay. Shane... Badman. <laughs> yes. Yes. Shane Badman. It's a little subtle. <laughs> Did you guys hear it? See if you can get it. Badman. Because yeah. it's Jewish. Because he's Jewish. Right. <laughs> Steve Protagonist. Yeah. Is the name. So dumb. Jesus. And I love, so they're having the funeral and they're like, but at least we know that Shane is in a better place. And then the camera starts panning down. <laughs> And, I'm, and of course, I'm like, wait, is hell actually low in there? Is it below sure us? Is. It's in like there? 12 feet underground. <laughs> it is. Hell is so shallow in this. I expected like a guy digging out a pool to hit hell by accident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be great, kids. You'll see. Ah! Oh, fuck. <laughs> How do you guys feel about an above ground pool? <laughs> So yeah, so we pan down to hell. We get Shane waking up there. And this is where we're first introduced to the green screen effects that we're going to get in this Was film. Was that a green screen? The main character of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, believe it or not, Heath, that was, that was they weren't screen. actually at Burning Man at all. <laughs> I thought you were going to say they weren't actually in hell. <laughs> Just watching their location manager talk to Satan. Come on. <laughs> Just an afternoon. We just need an afternoon to shoot. And I love this because this is where Shane is going to wake up, right? He's very obviously in hell. There's flames and there's demons and shit. But he has he walks around and he's like, where am I? Where am I? And they make him do that for way too long for it to make any sense. Just like everything else in this movie, it just goes on for like two and a half minutes longer than it should have. Yeah, Shane's performance here is like guy lost at a music festival who you're kind of okay dying of thirst at this point. <laughs> Where am I? Okay, maybe go towards the big fire in the center of the party. I'm just saying. <laughs> Clean up some garbage while we're here. Leave only footprints, am I right? Three old hippies are like, I like that joke. I little gentleman I didn't know have sex with my face. So <laughs> I gave him water to do it. <laughs> now that I say it out loud, not super great. <laughs> Gifting culture, you turn into sex trafficking so quickly. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So, this is also where we're going to meet our demons. So, the demons of this, first of all, just by applause, how many of you actually watched this movie? Oh, wow. All right, awesome, awesome. 
Yeah, yeah, no, don't do that. But you, so you know, the demons are like basically wearing kiss makeup without really putting the effort in. Yeah. <laughs> like clown makeup, but without the red. Yeah. It's like the PTA tried to do a Kiss cover band show <laughs> to make up for the fact that the principal killed himself at the last pep rally. <laughs> I want to forget all about last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but eventually, though, the demons clue him in. His gyms are super high. They haven't gotten him down yet. Yeah, so, audience at home, Eli's doing visual humor. You... Should have been here. His wife left him. So, so yeah, but so Shane figures out that he's in hell. He has this big, you know, disappointed kind of a moment there. <laughs> he has to speak to the manager at one Basically, point. Basically, yeah. Which was fun. I also like the canon, according to this movie. When you go to hell, you're in the clothes that you were wearing when you die yes. for the rest of hell. Yes. It seems to the lesson is... You dress up like Sting the wrestler when you're about to die, and now oh, you're a minion in hell, shit. and you're not in hell. You're like, a, you have a they job. They wouldn't there. even know. Okay, yeah. other idea. When I start to die, and it may be on stage, so be quick. <laughs> Pope costume. <laughs> Just so you can fuck with people, you walk around, you'll be like, I don't know what I got it wrong. I feel like there's going to be a lot of popes down there. It's all of the child rape, I'm telling you. Curse you, gifting a culture. <laughs> And then, okay, so then the movie, like, suddenly realizes that it doesn't have an hour and a half from there. So we cut to, the, to a beach, and the title tells us that it is six days before hell. Now, the way that these days are going to advance from this point in this movie is fucking baffling. Deepak Chopra could not decode what the fuck is going on with these days. You'll see as we go. It's chasing the scriptwriter. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I only have three days left. I gotta have something happen. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but th this scene is pretty much useless, right? He's just at the beach. He comes in. His wife is just like, you sure were surfing for a long time? I thought maybe you had drowned and died and gone to hell. And he's like, no, I'm not going to drown and die and go to hell at all. He, he seems to think he literally cannot drown. Yeah. <laughs> right? He's like, don't worry, I can't drown. <laughs> I'm Aquaman. <laughs> I should say, by the way, Aquaman, he ain't. That'll be important later. If Aquaman fucked one of those deep, deep sea fishes... Okay, yeah, the ones with the little lamp exact, on his head. Exactly, that's what yeah. he looks like. He okay. looks like the kid that swims out of the Marianas Trench and is like, Hello, father, I'm here for 20 years of child sport. And Aquaman is like, Fuck, I gotta stop drinking. <laughs> I gotta stop drinking. You look like they shaved Oscar the Grouch, man. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> so but that's that whole scene that's the whole thing he comes back and he goes no I will never drown and I will never die and I won't go to hell and then we cut back to the high school production hell thing oh this is where we get to hear the first kiss of demons attempt at a British accent mm. which only happens at the front end of the sentence <laughs> He gives up every sentence. This is also where we meet. So this movie is going to have a lot of <laughs> cameos. <laughs> Other people that he's going to meet in hell. This is the first one. It is Mao Zedong. <laughs> Super not Mao Zedong. No, it's just... It's Chinese. It's Asian man. Yep. A, yeah, it's not, it's not a Chinese, Chinese no, it's, it's an Asian man. <laughs> they were like... They sat there and they were like, okay, so we know Rick. And there was like four seconds pause before someone had the courage to be like... Rick's Korean, man. <laughs> we can't. Please don't make it a movie. <laughs> but they do. Rick's there like, I am Chairman Mao. <laughs> we oh. meet Kim Il-sung later. And he's like, I could... It's fine. Because you know they had two Korean yeah, friends. Right. Yes. And Rick, Rick didn't see what was coming, but Kevin did. Yeah, Kevin was like, oh, I'll be Kim Il-sung. And Rick was like, that's weird. And they were like, ooh, Rick, so we've got one other part. <laughs> Fuck. Kevin! Gifting culture! <laughs> that one didn't make sense. It was just a three beat. Yeah, no, you got to earn it. I got to earn it. In there, yeah. I gotta earn it. <laughs> so, this is also where we learn. So, that they come up to Shane at one point, because he's still asking everybody where he is, and Mao Zedong's going, like, You're in fucking hell. I'm Mao Zedong. Where the hell else would you be, dudes? Flames, demons, come on. And then one of the demons comes up and he goes, Wait a minute. How did you miss hell orientation? They have an orientation in hell. 
an orient like like oh hello I didn't see you there. like a, <laughs> like a video Honestly, welcome to TGI Fridays yes. <laughs> sorry wrong script wrong script what the, the demons hell? had rolled out a TV like a hungover English teacher and yeah. just like oh we learn about uh, first sin first out or something yeah but no they tell him nobody's ever. <laughs> Watch. At home, Eli's still doing visual humor. So it's a Should have come to the live show. Yeah. <laughs> right? And then all of these fine people. I took a COVID test in a pharmacy at four in the morning for you people. <laughs> You're welcome. Yep, no worries. It's positive, by the way. Yeah, I don't want to tell you how it came out. No, thank Spoiler you. alert, that's why we required masks. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't have COVID anymore. That test was yesterday. Yeah, right. Right. Anthony Fauci says that if you have a live show, you can go <laughs> and do it. So anyway, so this is where Shane explains, of course, that he's Christian, so he's not even supposed to be here today. He starts hitting himself in the head to try to wake himself up. I can't tell if they're going for humor here or not, honestly. Okay, I have a quick question. Does Shane get into a fight with himself? Because yes. I would like to reenact what I saw. He okay. was like... Ugh. <laughs> you want to go motherfucker like he's rolling around on the ground with himself by the end of this scene Arbor <laughs> Krav Maga but we get uh, but, so, but he doesn't manage to wake himself up so now we cut to five days before uh, hell we're at a fancy hotel in Vegas now my audio note here is five people trying to sound like a large group applauding. <laughs> it's also wonderful. This is where we get what was almost my best worst, which is best worst idea of what rich is. <laughs> and in this movie's case, it's like, here I am at Circus Circus, the nicest casino in Las Vegas. <laughs> they have nickel and penny slots. <laughs> a guy died in the elevator. <laughs> His wife left him. <laughs> He's... But they can't get him down because he's counterweighting at this point. <laughs> you got picture it. Audience at home, Eli's now calling back to visual bits he did earlier. It's just, I'm going to be like uh, the Charlie Day meme in a minute here. But apparently, yeah, so he works for a, a private equity firm that announces their promotions on some pornographic game show set yeah. or something. And he's getting promoted right now. His speech for his promotion is amazing. It's like, you know, I am so much better than you guys that they promoted me. And then the audience goes crazy. You are better than us. Woo! Make some Karate Kid Bad Guy Day references. Yeah, he says sweep the leg to pump up the audience. I was like, I feel like there are winning catchphrases that villains didn't say before they injured a child. <laughs> and then we cut to his fancy house, his fancy pool, and it is now four days before hell. Okay, perverts, perverts. If you haven't watched this movie, it's the tushy set, okay? <laughs> it is like word for moment for moment, scene for scene. Oh, I, yeah, I've been and, in yeah, this it, house it, in you, VR. Absolutely, yeah. we've all <laughs> been sure. to this house. Yeah. They're trying to move those very conspicuous chairs out of the way, but that it, this is... The tushies. I expected a sponsorship. Like, you know how they thank the Marines <laughs> and the Navy at the end of, like, Iron Man movies? I wanted, like, and thanks to tushy.com for the use of your mansion. I love to. this. So the first thing that happens here is he's standing at the balcony looking out over the beautiful view or whatever, and his wife comes up and she goes, well, you're up awful early, but it's so very clearly two in the afternoon. Yeah. So what time do you usually get up, man? That's, that's not weird. <laughs> <laughs> People get up when they get up. But he goes, he's like, uh, you know, it's so weird. I finally got that big promotion, and I still have this weirdly shaped hole in my heart. It's just not fulfilling me. <laughs> I have money, success, fucking atheism, but I just, I'm missing <laughs> something. It's so, it rhymes with Dodd's glove. I don't know what. It's right here in the Tum region. So... Yeah, and of course, the, the wife, is, she is amazing, because every single... I wasn't doing a bit. It's good. You okay, keep, no, that's good. Actually, I want that to be a bit, Eli. Right. If you're doing that, I need that to be a bit. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but the wife, every single time we see her, will turn to him and say some variation of, we should serve the Lord now more, and he will say, nuh-uh. Yeah. 
to help people <laughs> save the moon. That's you. We are atheists. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> to be fair, that's what I say when Vulgarity for Charity comes around every year, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just do Matreon again. <laughs> Speaking of which, it is Matreon, and I'd like to thank everyone out there. Yeah! Just a quick, we have 10 minutes. It's fine. No, no, we're good. We're I'll good. do my Neil Gorsuch impersonation. Okay. Uh, Eli, can I? <laughs> Go ahead. Eli did not do a physical <laughs> bit just now. So, but Eli, I'm going to tempt you back because the next scene is the one where they start off singing Amazing Grace. Yes! <laughs> this, I almost went with best, worst, Amazing yeah, Grace. Yeah, right? It is, you could line up prisoners about to be shot in some kind of mass grave and be like, all right, everyone, amazing grace, and it would be better than this. Oh, yeah. Also, everyone in this church is, you hit the character randomizer on Elden Ring. Well, after you put an exclusion for black, though, right? Yeah. This is as diverse a group of people as you could possibly have without there being any black people in it. It's like Canada. Um... <laughs> So, they, but they're at this. They're at this church now. They sit down, and we're going to get this sermon from their preacher guy. And he starts off by saying, "Did you know that more than fifty percent of Christians don't believe in hell? Maybe more." It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Maybe you can't Google this shit. <laughs> I googled it. It's more than that. <laughs> I wish all preachers started their stuff that way, though. They were just like, "Do you know how many people are women? Nine. <laughs> Anyways, back to this boring book. <laughs> Slaves are eight dollars. <laughs> this book's bad. So yeah, but so the preacher talks about hell and about how you know you could be in hell by the end of this movie. Who even knows, right? So then we get Shane and his wife leaving, and he's going like, "Man, that fucking sermon about hell was stupid. I'm not going to go to hell later in this movie. What the fuck is he even talking about? It doesn't even make sense." Yeah, Shane makes the face that he makes at me when he's trying to escape a boring conversation in an atheist convention. <laughs> the entire time, he's just like, <laughs> "I know you see me patting my head. We agreed on this. Just pick up my baby and walk away." <laughs> So yeah, but so he's he's stopped by the priest. He's in the middle of talking. We really do. We they, they, they kick Time. us out Go at ahead. a certain yeah, point, going. you know. <laughs> but he walks by the priest while he's talking about what a shitty sermon that was and how hell is stupid. And then he comes across a homeless guy. And we're gonna meet this homeless guy. This was the wardrobe director's moment to shine, yo. They had some fun homelessing up this guy. Absolutely. <laughs> the wardrobe director was like, homeless people, they're always painting, right? Painting houses. <laughs> yep. a lot of, they paint? Well, everything, they paint white things yep. a lot. Okay. Yes. Painting houses, college sweatshirts, the homelessness motto. <laughs> yeah. So he comes up and he's like, can you guys spare some change? And Shane is like, no, you're gross. Go away. Doesn't he say, why does God let people be homeless? That he does. And then he realizes, he's like, fuck. The movie's losing it to itself. When it, with that <laughs> and they just cut, and they move away. They do this several times. Well, so, but what he really is saying, uh, the way he phrases it is, why does God let bums use all that same oxygen that I'm using? Gross. Right? That's, uh, yeah, he uses the term cockroaches to describe them. So we established that. We're the, right, he's a Christian. He goes to church, but then he walks out of church, calls the homeless people cockroaches, and wishes that he could genocide them. In case you didn't catch that, we're going to establish that about 11 more times before the movie's over. But before we get that, we have to get actual hell orientation. Yes. This is where we learn that they only had one demon costume. So there's a demon in a demon costume, but then there's just Craig in a T-shirt. Yep. It's sweatpant. Like, yeah. hell has casual Friday for somebody. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Raw, yeah. Welcome to hell, my dudes. Yeah. Well, no, but this is Legion. He has, like, the legit sounding British accent. He has the accent the other guy was going for yeah. the whole time. But he's like a British CrossFit trainer who's obnoxious. He's a cyclist or whatever. I hate him yeah. so much. This was a good choice for hell. I'm amazed that hell induction didn't include, like, fruit is poison, man. I'll tell you. <laughs> Might as well use a candy bar. So yeah, but they're they're doing the orientation, and one of the women, the only as as uh, our favorite listener April Poff pointed out, the only woman in all of hell. I, I mean, honestly, that's probably that that's about right. Um, 
So she starts crying and talking about how she's a good person, and the demon gives her the Tom Hanks, there's no crying in hell speech, right? Yeah. And this is where we learn that Rufus is, he's got exactly as many moves as Indiana Jones. Yep. Right? Every time somebody gets, like, up, he, he gets upset with somebody, he gives them a right hook. Oh, does he also do the headbutt? He's the headbutt guy, too? Oh, does he do yeah. a headbutt? I think he does a headbutt. Head- oh, he's, he's okay. Punch, punch and head- it's a 75-year-old demon who punches and headbutts, and my favorite part about this guy is he's wearing the exact shoes of Eli Bosnick right now, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. He also has the exact body of Eli Bosnick, so it's he's very clearly supposed to be scary, but he like lumbers over him and he's like, oh, you shut up! And then he's like a little winded as an actor. <laughs> oh, do we have any shorter people I could punch? Like a, like a kid? Maybe there's a kid in hell? <laughs> there are kids in hell, right? There should be. Th- there are kids in hell in this movie. Cool, yeah, yeah let's right, get one yeah, of them. Yeah. I'll punch one. I'll punch two. <laughs> So, but then he, he goes along with it. You know, he's like, raise your hand if you don't think you belong here in hell. And of course, everybody raises their hand except one guy. That's awesome, that one guy. I want that guy's movie. So honest. Where he's like, yeah, fine. I mean, <laughs> if they're keeping track of any damn thing, I'm going to be here. No, yeah. no, I, I get it. it. It started as gifting culture, but it really spun out of control. That's on me. So... Yeah, but he explains then that that in hell they're going to work all the time, every day. And I'm like, okay, so hell is like being an employee at pretty much any point in history. It's right. capitalism. Right. Yeah, they're yeah, describing capitalism so far. Which, okay, all right. Still several points above an Amazon warehouse at this yeah, point. For sure. So, okay, so now we're going to cut to three days before hell. The day before he was getting his big promotion, today he is endorsing a political candidate. Mm-hmm. Right, he's given this big speech where he's, he's he starts talking about how the the biggest problem facing our nation today is noise pollution. <laughs> I see he's running on the same campaign as I am. No. I get it. <laughs> if he came out against fireworks, I'd be like, all right, let's give this movie a chance. And this is where we start this amazing pattern. Well, I guess we've already started it with this character where he's we're supposed to be establishing that he says he's a Christian, but he's not really a very good person. But they go so overboard because, let's face it, most Christians are such terrible fucking people, right? That they actually have to like go way overboard before they're not just describing their own audience. So they have him like doing his big speech and saying, and you know what else is we should execute all the credit card scammers, huh? And the audience is like, woo, execute the credit card scammers. We're Democrats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was one of the many times in this movie that I was like, okay, what political bent is this movie going for? <laughs> Pro credit card scammer? <laughs> well, they're just, just left of murdering them. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, but we get that speech and then we get his wife the next day. This, is, this next day, by the way, will still be three days before hell. Trust me. So the next day she's like, you know, I didn't care for your speech last night where you talked about executing credit card scammers. And he's like, really, you didn't? She's like, you know, God is not a politician. You shouldn't have mentioned God in it. Yeah. Like, that's your fucking problem with that speech? Yeah. She says, really? where are your fruits at one point? She's yeah. Like, where are your fruits? And I wrote in my notes, I feel like this is not the first time someone said, where are your fruits on this set? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cum on that tabletop. Shit. And she says, of course, because she's the sane person in the movie that's correct, she says, you know, we're in a spiritual battle right now, and most Christians aren't even aware of it. In fairness, I do like to walk past, like, churches with people and, like, pretend I'm doing evil magic for a second. Okay. And then, like, run away. Yeah, right, right. I like to pretend to hit a force field, right? Like, you're going to turn and... (laughs) (laughs) Try to mime your way into the box. Right, Yeah. yeah. And then the movie very quickly tries to win us back with a corgi, or tries to win Heath back with a corgi. Oh, fat corgi! Okay. In fairness, it worked. Yeah. Fat corgi's delightful. It was pretty cute corgi. Here's the thing. If, if you're making a Christian movie and you're trying, to, it's, you're trying to say that intelligent design is real, don't put a corgi in it. <laughs> Corgis are indisputable proof of non-intelligent design <laughs> at best. It's adorable, stupid design. Yes. They're great. I love this scene. And this cor- this corgi is carrying some COVID weight. Like, let's be yeah. real. 
Yeah, so there's this lovely young lady that's walking her corgi down the uh, the beach, and Shane sees her, and she's like, oh my god, are you that famous private equity firm middle manager? Are you the middle manager of an equity firm in Vegas that I saw in Forbes? Will you sign my label? It's ridiculous. <laughs> she says, no, she says that I saw on Forbes. On the, uh, They have a TikTok uh, yeah. or something. <laughs> I saw on Forbes. Put a finger down if you got your start because your dad owned an emerald mine convicted of literal slavery. <laughs> so. And also, I love this moment because, like, I feel like this was in the dude's contract. Like, this was his way. Like, they, look, you don't have to pay me. But at some point, a very attractive woman has to say to me, hey, all that working out seems to really be paying off for you. So, <laughs> there's no amount... Again, they shot on a porn set. This is the most degrading thing a woman has done <laughs> in this building. A woman was showering the human feces off her chest and watching this scene and being like, ooh, girl, there's other stuff you can do for money. <laughs> so- Yuck. He looks like the Noid. <laughs> <laughs> he combed his little ears back yeah out. yeah so okay so he heads back home his wife tries to talk him into going to bible study but he doesn't want a stupid bible study damn it when she tries to convince him to do a bible quickie in the morning yes. she's like okay well it's just like before you will you watch me read the bible real quick before you go to work <laughs> you don't have to read the bible with just watch me read them and then okay And then we go back to church, which again, this is the third day. This is the second day of the third day, but this is the third day. We already went to church the day before. So he's now gone to church two days in a row, right? I'm starting to envy hell. (laughs) No shit. I can carry some rocks. Yeah. So yeah. (laughs) But at this is the most amazing thing I think I've ever seen. This is one of the laziest based on a book fucking things we have ever encountered. The pastor starts quoting from the book that this movie is based on. <laughs> so yeah, basically the preacher just comes out and says, now imagine this movie's premise, if you will. <laughs> Hell is a real place in this movie. Ow! Yeah. Fourth wall! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> I hurt my Christian head. Isn't the line like, "Would an atheist who goes to hell and like learns that hell is real would they get would they use their second chance to become a Christian?" Yeah, yeah, that, exactly. That's mm-hmm. the thing. That, but and yes, right? Like, if you're an atheist, you literally go to hell and see that. Of course, of course, you'd like, "Oh, you're God, and you showed me I'd become a Christian." But like, would a Christian meet Jewish God and be like, "Yeah, I'm Jewish"? No, they wouldn't. No, I feel like they would. I feel like they would. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> See, my plan if I end up in hell is I'm going to pretend I'm into it the whole time and wreck it for them. Yeah. And just be like, I made it to heaven. And they'll be like, what? And I'll be like, I was always into being burned. And they'll be like, fuck. <laughs> He's got us there. <laughs> Gifting culture. So so they leave, uh, they leave church again. And, and once again, Shane is bitching about how he doesn't like this preacher that's always talking about hell. He would prefer one of those prosperity gospels that he sees on the TV. Right? He would rather go to one of those churches. And his wife says, well, look, hell is real. That's the whole premise of the fucking movie. I don't know what to tell you. And God is coming back any minute. And I wrote in my notes, Christians now and also literally 2,000 years ago. (laughs) And also 2,000 years from now. I'm going on record now. She says that. And then she looks around. She's like, God is coming back any minute. And then nothing nothing happens. Like She thought she did a magic trick. And she's like, hey. (laughs) <laughs> I wanted God to walk out of the porn pantry just like with a bucket of popcorn just like no not now no, I'm just I was at crafty <laughs> so just alright so then we, we go back to him at home he's businessing really hard on the phone right this is still this is the next day still three days from hell your understanding of business is so silly here. <laughs> he, he, again, he's a private... They don't know what private equity no, is. No. Uh, but he's a private equity guy, so he's like, our offer is $120 million, not a penny less. So, <laughs> in the reality of this movie, <laughs> they were selling something, and somebody called the equity firm and was like, come on, $119 million, <laughs> And they said, no. That's Fuck what no! Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, exactly. And, and then... We catch back up with the opening scene where they find out that Shane's dad 
but then later we won't have done that. So I feel like the movie just just asked for a do-over. Yeah. So I'm inclined to give it to them. So we're going to pause for just a second while they bo- you know set the board back up and shit. But we'll be back in a minute with even more Journey to Hell. <laughs> This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Hey, podcast listener, as you might guess, planning a live show can be a pretty stressful ordeal. Eli, where are the t-shirts? For selling or wearing? Why would I care about the shirts you're wearing? I don't... But there are a lot of things that can cause you stress. Work, relationships, family stuff. What most people don't know is that talking to a licensed professional therapist can help with that. Wait, you're saying I don't need a mental illness to talk to a therapist? Nope. Sometimes it's just nice to have an impartial professional to talk to. Eli, did you put all the pens just loose in the bag? How else was I supposed to put them in the bag, Keith? Uh, In the boxes they came in? BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anybody on camera if you don't want to. It's affordable and they have financial aid available. Give it a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. Keith, this suitcase is just filled with cheese. That's the cheese suitcase. Don't touch it. I told you don't touch it. Plus, God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. I'm putting the pens in with the cheese. No, you're going to get it all inky. That's not how pens work. So cheese works. You got to believe me. There's got to be a mistake. I was a Christian, I swear. You fool. Everyone says that down here. Nobody thinks they belong in hell. Uh, sorry? Oh, yes. What's your excuse? Oh, no. I actually didn't want to interrupt, but I, I, I do actually think I belong down here in hell. You do? Oh, yeah, definitely. I used to... Jesus. Dude, gross. Yeah, you guys do not know the half of it. So eventually that stopped doing it for me. So I had to start. You're a monster. I'm going to be sick. You literally make me sick. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I get that a lot. Okay, okay, that's enough. Everyone except that guy says that they don't belong here, okay? So back to your punishments. Also a big fan of zip lining. Can I get a different chair? Yeah, why don't you scooch up here next to me? Thanks. And we're back live from Toronto. And so now we're going to rejoin Shane in hell on his second day. This is where they really start to dig into the break policy in hell. Now, this is the, the first thing they tell us is there are no breaks in hell. This will turn out not to be remotely fucking true. No. The job is throwing rocks into yes. a lake. I wanted people to be like, <laughs> skipping stones along the lake. This is fun. <laughs> like, what would happen if you stopped doing that and they, they yell at me like, we put you in a timeout. I don't know. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't think hell through. What I wanted to see at this point, though, was a guy in hell who likes being whipped and the minions sure. like didn't know what to do. I yeah. feel like I would confuse people in hell if I got there. Hell, Eli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Now, we should also point out, by the way, that when we say that their job is to throw rocks into the lake of fire, that, that's what they're going to be doing through the whole movie. But apparently nobody wanted to spring for the big fake rocks. So it went, there was these little tiny ass rocks that are the size of a, like a loaf of bread. And everybody has to selectively remember to pretend that they're very, very heavy. And their space work skills are not strong. <laughs> they do so badly. Some people are like, oh, I can barely lift. And some people are like, oh, that guy's actually strong. It's like watching nine-year-olds playing. <laughs> <laughs> then one guy's just like, I actually can take two because I am a Superman and I have all the quip tonight. <laughs> so I put two walks into hell. That knocks you down. <laughs> <laughs> Gifting coach <laughs> Also, also at this point, Shane, do you know who I am's hell? He pulls a full Ted Cruz. He's like, I'm a Christian. I went to church two days in a row in the flashbacks. <laughs> he goes full Ted Cruz in that he asks who he is and he deserves to be in hell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I wish I was about to transition to the part where the Zodiac Killer was here. I'm not. <laughs> Instead, we're going we're gonna to transition now to where the, the part where he meets Nero. 
By the way, we mentioned this slightly when we met Chairman Mao, but everyone will walk up and they don't look enough like the person and they don't have the costume right. Yeah. So this guy just has a bed sheet and is like, hello. And Shane's like, I wasn't paying attention. I look like the Muppet that goes, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, no, that's a good point. I'm Nero. And he's like, who? And he's like, right. Right, yeah. <laughs> so this is also where we learn that these people don't know how months, days, and weeks work. This is a direct fucking quote from the movie. He says to Nero, he's like, you've been here like 2,000 years, huh? And Nero says, and I quote, 2,000 years, eight weeks, what? 12 days. <laughs> 1,900 years, <laughs> four score and seven <laughs> years ago. That's negative. Four score and seven <laughs> years plus now, 13 years. Pie Fortnites. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> to be fair, Julian hasn't come along and fucked up my calendar yet. I really, I nailed it on my first try. I'm telling you, <laughs> the castle run in twelve parsecs. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense either. Do you think Han Solo went to hell? Oh yeah. <laughs> he shot first. No. <laughs> Ah, so yeah, so we meet Nero, and Nero's there, by the way, to tell him, like, you know, I've killed a lot of Christians. You're no true Christian. You wouldn't have died for Christ. And he's like, oh yeah, no, I guess I wouldn't have. <laughs> this is also where we meet Pastor Jack. We met him briefly at the um, orientation earlier, but that's his black friend in hell and in life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the movie makers. We had two. He also had Michael, the guy he fires later. Well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but he has that, he has to argue with Pastor Jack and he's like, hey man, I'm a Christian. We firmly established that I went to church two days in a fucking row. Why am I in hell? And he's like, it's not enough to just accept Jesus Christ into your heart. And he's like, that's the whole fucking thing. That's the whole thing. It's why we did a split off religion from Judaism. Yes. They kept asking us to do stuff. <laughs> we nailed a guy to a lowercase t for this, Jack. <laughs> Follow along. I'm sorry. Woo! That was the game. <laughs> oh. This is also where we learn that there's no sleep in hell. And I'm like, well, that's nice. That's pretty nifty, right? I'm all right with that. And then, and then Shane tries to cry, and we're all in hell for a minute. It was, Ooh. Okay, so Shane wanders off, because apparently you're allowed to go wherever the fuck you want in hell. And this is where we meet Hitler. Now, this is, this is probably only funny to me, but the guy that they got to play Hitler looks almost exactly like my father-in-law. <laughs> and he also has exactly as much of a German accent. <laughs> so, it was a weird one for me. So, but why did they go with like an 80-year-old guy to play Hitler? Hitler didn't make it to 80. Yeah. I feel like he already had the costume. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That guy had that. Like, he showed up to the shoot day, and they were like, who hired him? And they were like, oh, no, that's just Rick. Yeah. <laughs> My nephew's a congressman from North Carolina. <laughs> Do you want to watch his sex tape? For now, he is. I would anyway, love yes. to. <laughs> Look at him go. I know. He's going to town on his that's cousin's his, face. That's his cousin, if you can believe this shit. <laughs> So he has it up on his computer. I was just pointing to. So. It's gifting culture. I it's always fine. have it up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but so Hitler stops Shane and he's like, "So how's Germany doing? It's good. It's good." It's like I don't, I don't. You're fucking Hitler, man. Strong social safety. I don't know why you. At, you're Hitler. <laughs> We're both here. Stop. This makes sense. It brings up the question of what answer Hitler would want, right? Right. If you were like, oh, no, universal health care is going well, really well there, he'd be like, mm, how did I feel about that? <laughs> Not a Juden? Ah. Uh, and then, oh, <laughs> this is where we find out where they really spent the crowdfunding money on this movie. This is where Legion flies in with his little bat wings. Yes! This is the greatest. It's nice to see that the guy from International Gorillas and Vultures of Horror <laughs> still is still working, getting work, yeah. right? <laughs> 
It's amazing. It takes so long. Everybody just is like, oh, here comes Legion. Just talk amongst yourselves for a bit. He's going to. It's like when an old person comes to dinner and there's a thing before they sit down. That's how Legion yeah. lands. You're just like, okay, grandma. Oh, no, she's like six feet away, man. You pulled out the chair way too soon. Yeah. Yeah, but so the demons explained to him that he wasn't... Cre- Did you push her over? I pushed her over. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I figured you might. My son caught her from the earlier space work. <laughs> That's why I gave him the dollar. The, 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 the visual bits are literally stacking up at this point, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but so Shane drops to his knees and he apologizes to God and he's like, okay, please, please, please take me out of hell. And they're like, nope, doesn't work like that Bible quote, right? And then... As I predicted, when we went like three days into three days before hell, we now cut to two days before hell. (laughs) Sometimes days stack on top of each other. You know how it is. And we meet Shane and Hannah leaving a Christian movie together. And she's defending it. Yes. And they're trying to do like this meta thing, right? They're like, well, of course it had terrible effects and bad acting, but it was winning minds to Christ. So it's okay movie just pins a participation trophy on itself (laughs) we tried our best and that's all that mattered the movie though is literally saying if you give us a bad review you will burn in hell that's literally we've never had a movie literally tell us that before I don't think that's my new policy for iTunes reviews though (laughs) anything less than five stars you go to hell fair fair and then, so, so, of course, we once again have to establish that he may call himself a Christian, but he's no real Christian, because this is where he gets really angry at somebody driving by playing music that he doesn't like and, and wishes that they could murder all the people who don't play Mozart. Was that it? Were they trying to be anti-Mozart? I like, what's another <laughs> stupid fucking atheist thing? <laughs> Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, gross. <laughs> no talent. Play some fucking Nickelback. Atheists... <laughs> Assholes with your classical music and your quiet cars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we get to see his sweet Porsche that they rented for the weekend. Oh yeah, this is so fucking stupid. He, but again, like Eli was saying, the way that this movie thinks being rich works. He pulls up and he's like, "Huh, Porsche?" And the wife's like, "Where did you get that?" He guys, he says, and I quote, "The director of The Fast and Furious just gave it to me. It was in the movie." No, liar, liar. No, it's not. No, it's not. There's two Porsches in the entire franchise, the GT3 and the Cayman. This is neither. Stupid. (laughs) Stupid movie moment. This movie's not realistic at all. Dumb. (laughs) Read a book movie. But But the wife goes, we already have ten cars. We don't need this one. Which implies that she felt like 10 cars was a good amount to right, have. yes. No, because you know when you take the car, and I take the car, <laughs> and the seven dwarves take the car. <laughs> so, and then she says, again, I have to just quote directly from the movie. She says, this car could have gone to helping people with COVID in Africa, or to send Bibles to Afghanistan. I'm like, way to think of a worse use than sitting in the garage with the other 10 cars. Yeah. Also, in response yes. to hearing about Africa and Afghanistan, he says, yes. Africa and India aren't my responsibility. They think Afghanistan is part of India. Just to review. <laughs> Just to review. This movie thinks Forbes is a TikTok movie. Yep. They don't know about months. Nope conceptually and they think <laughs> Afghanistan is part of India so and they think there's a god I like how they hedge their bets with the COVID deniers in their audience though they were like we could help people with COVID in Africa <laughs> right. yes yes <laughs> we would never trample on your rights <laughs> so okay so now we cut back to hell where Legion is given Shane a little tour now a la Dante and he's going to take him down this long flight of hell stairs whereupon they're going to come across Kim Il-sung. This is where the movie has to admit he started out a, a fucking Christian, if you can believe that shit. <laughs> Legion sort of mumbles it under his breath. He's like, yeah, he was a preacher, but we don't like him anymore. <laughs> 
And then, yeah, he's like, this is, boy, hell is pretty bad. And he's like, oh, you, you wait until it levels up, right? This is just Hades. It's going to level up to full hell after <laughs> Jesus comes back. If you go down one more flight, it's just the movie watching itself somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, all right. It's buffering a lot, though. <laughs> And then he says, he's like, okay, so they meet Kim Il-sung. Kim Il-sung yells about how he's a god. Apparently, if you're bad enough, you just get to, like, yell at other people when you get to hell. That's a weird lesson, right? Yeah. You're, like mid you're like the assistant to the regional manager if you genocide enough. Right. And we're... we're yeah, well, that actually it. explains a lot of Christian history, though, if you, if you think <laughs> about it like that. So then they, got, they decide to go to, again, this is their term for the place, the place of least torment... Way to go, guys. You don't need to keep working on that name. And this is the section of hell where the people who have never heard of Jesus go. They still have a hell for those people. Yeah. So he shows them the guy who, like, scammed his credit card at one point. He's yes. like, yeah, that guy hadn't heard of Jesus. I wanted them to pan over, and it's like, oh, and that's like 900 million early hominids. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot. We have a big... We didn't think it through. It's, it's so many. Just a Neanderthal? <laughs> Eli's doing Neanderthal humor now. <laughs> For those of you listening at home. Gifting economy. <laughs> so, so yeah, so, and, and we also learned, this is where they have the guy who, again, I'm quoting from the movie here, slows down your iPhone when the new one comes out. Okay, I agreed with this moment in the movie. Sure. Well, but, but isn't it odd that that guy's never heard of Jesus? <laughs> I odd. feel like that would have come up. At some point. Yeah. And of course, all the punishments are silly. Like, he has to have a phone glued to his hands at all times or some dumb shit. That's all they've got. So, and then he takes, they made a whole big deal the last time he walked down a set of stairs to say, this is the lowest level of hell. But then he walks down another fucking flight of stairs. Now it's the real lowest level. <laughs> Lo double, in times infinity. Double secret. Fuck. All right. Circle, circle, dot, dot, lowest of hell. <laughs> And we didn't mention it before, but when he was talking about, when he was bitching about noise pollution earlier, he said the worst sounds were, again, quoting the movie, a Harley bike, a leaf blower, and a Doberman barking. Those were the worst sounds. So then we hear, he walks down into the lowest, lowest level of hell, and we hear the sound of a vacuum cleaner, right? Very clearly a vacuum cleaner. Like a hand vac. Yes, yeah, exactly. And he goes, oh my God, what's that sound? And the demon's like, it's a combination of a Harley bike, a leaf blower, a Doberman barking, and a bratty baby. And I'm like, no, it's a fucking vacuum cleaner. <laughs> like, and Morgan, <laughs> Kevin, back me up. It would be pretty easy to combine the sounds of a fucking Harley bike, a leaf blower, a Doberman barking, and a baby, right? Like, I'm a fucking podcaster and I can do that. Also, how is that? Hell is pet peeves at this point. <laughs> it's just, it's like, that's the sound of failing at capture because there was actually a bike in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the level of hell where you get a five on Wordle. Uh, now you eat a banana a day early. It could have been a little bit riper. <laughs> Open a soda can and the top, it opens, but the top thing comes off and you're like, what the fuck do I do with this now? And there's that tiny little sharp thing and you're like, why is there, there's got to be a better way of opening soda. It's not World War II anymore. We're not saving aluminium for the fight against Hitler. <laughs> is this USB-A? What the fuck? So, why would it not be symmetrical? <laughs> Stupid. How did you like the live show? Well, Heath and Eli started talking about their <laughs> pet peeves. Eli doesn't laugh at me. And it was the rest of the, steer, the noise of Eli. Steer back to the... <laughs> so, oh, also among the um, guests in hell is the pharmaceutical executive that decided not to cure cancer or the common cold. It's so, like, man, the guy who faked the moon landing is going to show up any second now in their hell. <laughs> Oh, but it's even, it's even fucking worse. It's the Columbine killers that we meet next. Very tasteful. There's, a, there's an amazing moment here where Shane is like, oh, yeah? Well, two of your victims went to heaven. Sorry. Two? Yes. There were more than two victims, right? Oh, yeah. I was pretty sure that was the case. Yep. So I was like, oh, are we going to meet... 
The victims that went to hell? <laughs> yes! Someone just walks up and slaps one of the Columbine kids in the head. Ha-ha! <laughs> I'm one of the victims who didn't go to heaven. <laughs> My notebook was full of boobs. <laughs> That's a god-awful movie's deep cut. If you get that joke, I'm really sorry. I don't get that joke. <laughs> Remember she drew the teardrops and they were like, that's how many yes, kids yeah, died. Yes, yeah, no, I got it. I got it. I was following you, Eli. I feel sorry for me, too. Thank you. <laughs> puppet Heath would have known the reference. <laughs> My puppet was on that episode. <laughs> <laughs> Audience at home, Heath's referring back to something that happened while we were at a break and you don't know about because you didn't come to the live didn't show. Didn't come to the live show. <laughs> so now... Believe it or not, you're going to descend into a lower level of hell. It's so fucking stupid. He goes, they walk in and he goes, this is worse than my worst nightmare. And they're like, in what way? He's like, hotter. This is much hotter. Thirsty. He says, it's like being in the World Trade Center during 9-11. This jet fuel doesn't burn that hot. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. I wanted a guy to walk over and start explaining that, and it's like, okay, you belong here. Okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. What's that about Ayn Rand? Yeah, no, okay, I, I'm sure. Right. Fair enough. How does, the, how does the blockchain work? Tell me more about that. <laughs> I love this. But instead, this is where we meet Judas Iscariot. Right? Yeah, should right? He be, should he be in hell, though? It, the whole fucking religion relies on him doing what he did. Thank you. Yes, he is a hero of Christianity. I wanted them to, to pan over to like another guy. He's like, yeah, we also have the guy who refused to narc on Jesus. Right, And yes. he fucked up our whole thing, really, and we had to find this guy. <laughs> this is Alan. Alan wouldn't narc on Jesus if I took for it. And Alan's just like, damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? What are you going to do? Yeah, but they ask him. They say, Judas, why did you betray Jesus? And he's like, I did it for the money. And I wrote in my notes, I was like, he didn't do it for the money. No, he didn't. Guys, it's your religion. It's your friend. <laughs> Why do we know so much more about it than you? So yeah, so Shane cries about how he'd like a do-over because, again, he's like, I'm not as bad as Judas Iscariot. And the movie's like, no, you kind of are. Now, we've, we've been underplaying that, but that's the message over and over again, right? He runs into Hitler, he runs to Kim, into Kim Il-sung, and he goes like, why am I in the same place as these people? And they're like, because according to Jesus, you're every bit as bad as these people. And I'm like, well, then... We shouldn't listen to that guy about morality, right? That's the lesson we should be taking away here. Yeah, this movie might as well be called, I know this makes no fucking sense, but... Yeah. <laughs> if you go with our fictional conceit... But then, uh, so, yeah, he says he wants to do over... Legion says that he had over two million chances to be saved. The guy's like 40, right? Yeah. So that's like, somebody mentioned Jesus... Once every 10 minutes for his entire <laughs> life. And each time he was like, no, absolutely not. I mean, honestly, from what we've seen of his wife. I, I was just... going to say, yeah. <laughs> psst, psst, are you asleep? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus died for our sins. <laughs> mm. Be our religion more. <laughs> So yeah, so then this is where Legion flies away in a manner that seems very inefficient. This is the greatest. It's so silly. He's trying to be so impactful. He's like, all right, I gotta go. Flap, flap, flap. He gets like this. Uh, <laughs> You'll never slake thine thirst. Flap. <laughs> Somebody's walking up a spiral stair passing him, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna take the stairs to hey. <laughs> I'm a demon. <laughs> All right. So now we go back to the flashback. It is now one day before hell. All of our notes at this point are like, come on, not that much more time before the end of the movie. Yeah, this will not be the last flashback, by the way. Why would you think it was, given how well they do with numbers up to this point? So we get Shane. We meet Shane. He's walking down the street, espousing eugenics to his black friend. Okay. That's not an exaggeration, though. Not at all. That's really. He's like, hey, buddy, I had a thought. I had a thought. So, uh, God is dead. I'm an atheist. Uh, we should bow hunt some poor people in a hedge maze, right? <laughs> it's like nearly my exact words just now. And I guy has to talk him down for the rest of the movie. 
Right, and what's amazing is that the, the underreaction from his friend Michael. Right, like over and over again in this movie, the, this guy will just, you know, like b- casually endorse Nazi ideology and everybody around him will be like, now Shane, don't be so rude. <laughs> no, <geez. laughs> Classic Shane, always going on about genocide. <laughs> no, his actual line is, come on, Shane, you sound like Scrooge complaining about the surplus population. <laughs> what does that mean? They're sullying the good name of Scrooge. Yeah, okay. Ultimately. Love DuckTales. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, Kurt Cameron. <laughs> so. Why are there still ducks? <laughs> this makes sense. Yeah, but this all ends in him, like, he, he does this whole big bit about how if he was a dictator, the th- first thing he would do is kill all the homeless people. I'm not exaggerating for comic effect. That's what they have the character to say. And then his buddy is like, cool, you want to go to our meeting? (laughs) (laughs) We can sit two afterwards. You get there early. Just one detail in this scene, though. In the middle of their, what they thought was a very serious philosophy talk, a skateboarder (laughs) flies through the shot and is like, fuck your face, I hate Christianity. (laughs) The boom mic guy has to jump back so they lose their audio. He gets scared. They lose their audio for like 10 seconds and they kept the whole thing. They kept that take, yes. Oh, God, at the top right of the screen the whole time I had to watch this on Vimeo. You had to buy it to watch it, so I apologize for all of you who had to do the same. Uh, Yeah, hopefully hopefully some (laughs) of you cheated. At the top right on the entire time on Vimeo, it would say, you own this. And I was just like, I know, Vimeo. Thank you. You don't have to keep fucking telling me. That, it felt judgy. Yes. It felt like yes. Vimeo was judging me. Yeah. Yes. Honest, I, made, I donated to Planned Parenthood yes. as like an ethical carbon offset. Yeah. Yeah. I stole this movie. Yeah, like... <laughs> Andrew, are we good? We're good? All right, Andrew's giving us the thumbs up there. You... All right, so yeah, safe. This, we're safe. It's and good. we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Tortiously interfere with this movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Shane and his buddy Michael they pull up for their big meeting, and this is where he notices a dent on his Porsche. Now, he notices the dent on the Porsche on the side that we're not looking at. (laughs) They did not have the money to dent that fucking Porsche. No. Good. He's like, who dented my door? And the other guy's to be like, oh, you mean over here on this side of the car that you haven't seen yet? Yeah, he's like, yes, that's on the other side. And he walks around and he's like, yes, over here where now I've seen it. (laughs) Yes. I'm mad about that. He wants to throw the car away. He's like, come on, I'm going to drag it over to the trash. It's mad now. (laughs) It's dented. It's no good. So, yeah, he freaks out. He's like, it's all those damn immigrants and homeless people. Look, they stole my registration sticker, too. How do they think that works? I mean, these people don't know months or Forbes. So, yeah, okay, registration stickers way beyond that. I just love the idea of Nick Cage being like, gone in 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but he screams and he yells and he talks about how th- they need to take out the useless eaters and that would fix this whole problem. And I'm not going to say this is what it was like walking around with Noah while he tried to find an instant COVID test this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it was like while I walked around with Noah. It wasn't to... racist. It I wasn't. Was... No, uh, it wasn't. He was right. very clear about Rexels and what he wanted to do to them. <laughs> All right, well, clearly Eli and I need to have an offstage whisper fight now. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will the makers of this film ever get any numerical thing correct? Who would win at throwing rocks in a lake of fire between Heath and Eli? I'll play you right now. Will Shane ask for the detailed measurements of his employees' skulls? (laughs) Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the prolonged conclusion of... Journey to Hell. (laughs) 
So normally we would never make our live audience sit through an ad read, right? We, we do those at home beforehand or we do them afterwards and we just insert the audio afterwards. But we're going to make an exception this time for you guys. Uh, because as many of you have noticed, Eli and Heath have kind of turned asking what each sponsor is into a blood sport. <laughs> Eli shot me with a trank one time, like a yep, neck dart. true, I did. Yep. So I still I got the point that time. There's only one way. Yeah, you did, because before you hit the ground, yeah, you did ask. I got the yeah. point. But I did think there might be a way to put an end to this madness. And that would be by adding more than 200 new names to the spreadsheet. No, you no, wouldn't no, no, dare! No, safe word. Safe, what is our safe word? So, Banana. Brand without muffin. further ado, our first sponsor this week is HelloFresh. Hello How dare you? Supposed to be on our side. This Come is on. our night. That's right, folks at home. Everyone who came to the live show now gets one point. Andrew, this is under protest. Also, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh's chefs really know how to diversify your dinner menu with seasonal spring recipes like sweet heat shrimp tempura bowls, garden spinach ricotta ravioli, and one-pot creamy lemon dill chicken soup. And don't forget to add items from the HelloFresh market like lemon ricotta pancakes or French macaroons to treat mom to some super yummy Mother's Day goodies. Okay, so we need uh, personal experience. Okay, well... I feel personally betrayed by the audience, Her. and I don't want to get. No, so, uh, no I mean, experience. I meant with HelloFresh. Okay, okay. Well, okay. We got a bag from them as a sample, and they're very delicious so and HelloFresh. easy to unpack. So go to hellofresh.com/awful16 and use code awful16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. So go to hellofresh.com/awful16 and use the code word awful16 for up to 16 free meals, three free gifts. That's right. Heath, Heath. Yeah. I just realized we have everyone's name on Eventbrite. We can add them to the sheet. Oh, we stay up yes! late tonight. Yeah! Battle continues. Okay. Okay. We're going to shoot you all the neck dart. <laughs> <laughs> and here is the fourth level of hell. That guy over there is a murderer. Wow. Yes, but you murdered just as many people in your heart, so you and he are the same. Oh, really? We are? Yes. So saith the Lord. Oh, man. I should have murdered way more people. Wait, hold on. What? Well, if they're the same, I mean, I totally should have just murdered a bunch of people, right? Ah, oh, I got cut off in traffic so many no, times. And no, I, like, that's, yeah. that, no, the point is that you have to repent while you're alive, not that you should murder more people. Right, but there's like so many denominations of Christianity, and they're all mutually exclusive. Right, yeah. It's not like there's a clear way, even when you think you're a Christian, to know that you're the right kind of Christian, right? I mean, I guess it is a little confusing, yeah. Right, so you're better off just, you know... Doing all the murders that you want to do since you're statistically more likely to go to hell for murders you just did in your head. But I, I, I feel like you really took the wrong lesson here. Is that the zip lining guy again? Yeah. Yeah, keep him away from me. He weirds me out. And we're back. <laughs> Aw, this is so sweet. And we're going to rejoin the action the night before hell. And once again, Shane is in church. It's three out of the last four fucking days. But this time, though, it's an evil mega church. Yeah, right? So the mega church preacher is standing up there going, being poor is a sin. He literally says, being poor is a sin. Because <laughs> that's the prosperity gospel. Also, like... Who is this for in this movie's... Uh, you charged $30 for this movie on Vimeo. Okay, Mr. Prosperity Gospel is bad. $30. Yeah. I can buy movies on many vids for $30, sir. Shot on the same set. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? So, yeah, but, but Shane is just eating up this money is awesome preacher. Right? 
He says the preacher goes like, I know that God is going to bless somebody with big cars and a lot of money, but that somebody is going to give me $10,000 tonight. I'm sorry, I wanted to pause long enough to see if it was going to work on any of you guys fucking, fucking skeptics. Sorry, did somebody? So, no. I no. felt like you were leaning in. Was that the puppet? Sir? <laughs> so, Ma'am? Did you guys like the live show? It was weird. They ended it with an auction? <laughs> That's... But fucking Shane, he can't wait. He pulls $10,000 cash out of his inside jacket pocket and starts waving it around. Really wanted him to have (laughs) (laughs) $9,999. Fuck! (laughs) Can I borrow a dollar from anyone? We're not taking a penny less. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I learned it from watching you. (laughs) But he gives the $10,000 to the preacher, and the wife is like, you're such a sucker. And he's like, what, you're giving money to preachers too? She's like, but less. But but it's a a larger percentage of my income, and I'm doing it out of fear, not joy. And he's like, yikes. (laughs) (laughs) But of course, Shane argues that this preacher must be better because he's richer. Right? I mean, if your guy is omnipotent. And then... We pull a downright Kubrickian time cut at this point, <laughs> and we rejoin Shane in hell a thousand years later. <laughs> a thousand years later. This is so fucking stupid because he's still bitching about the same shit. Look, you're, the 40 years you were on Earth right now is what, 0. 0.0-something percent of your fucking life, and he's still bitching about that? Yeah, and it's a thousand years, years later in hell, and he... <laughs> He sees an attractive woman, and he's like, hey, weren't you in my orientation a thousand years ago? Yes. And honestly, I felt attacked by this relatable content uh, okay, at this moment. Yeah, yeah. I've seen Heath flirt worse. If I was, yeah. It's true. If I was in hell for a thousand years with this attractive woman, a thousand years later, I'd be like, hi. <laughs> Stupid. I'll see you in We're another in thousand years. orientation. <laughs> I have a podcast. <laughs> Have you noticed how many babies there are down here? It's crazy. <laughs> they have just little tiny rocks. <laughs> yes. I ah! love, this is maybe my favorite moment of them trying to act like Sisyphus carrying their little tiny styrofoam rocks. <laughs> it's so silly. And then, yeah, they, oh, and then the evil pastor that he gave the money to shows up, right? And he's like, oh, you're going to bitch at me about $10,000 again. He's like, you're damn right, I'm going to bitch at you about $10,000 fucking dollars again. We're in hell. I feel like if you can do anything, if you can talk about anything you want in hell, a thousand years later, it's gotten fun, right? <laughs> a thousand years later, you're just like, you've made up a language and you're doing audiobooks in it. Scoon doodly doon fin cement event. It's been a thousand years. What fuck else are you going to do? You wouldn't invent a language. Get the fuck out of here. I'd pretend to have invented a language. You would pretend to have invented a language. I'd fuck with people for at least a thousand years. For a while. You'd commit to it for a while. I'd pretend I was Hitler. (laughs) I am the real Hitler. Stop it. So it'd really be not much different than Than his day to day. Pretty much. Same thing. I was just checking if I was in hell. Yeah, no, no. I get it. I was. Keith was also checking to see if Eli was in hell. <laughs> Listeners at home. So yeah, so the demon's like, yeah, you should have listened to your wife about Jesus. But then they give him a little break, right? They're like, why don't you take a quick break? It's been a thousand years. We'll give you 15. Yeah. And, and it's, it's so weird because he's like, please just let me have a break. And they're like, ha, 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 there are no breaks. It's fine. Sure. Go ahead. You yeah, want to take like a... Do you like a take? I wanted like a smoking girl to come out of a walk-in fridge. This is not making my break shorter. No, Amber, your break isn't shorter. <laughs> you work at every restaurant. <laughs> Stop. You get fired for stealing. And you definitely go to hell. <laughs> Just come everywhere on that set, too. Yeah. yeah. If you've ever been in dry storage, it's not dry. No. <laughs> it's not. Thank you, restaurant people. And then, <laughs> yeah, there's so, some jokes are more awkward when they die than others. Mm. 
I was with you front of house. People have no idea what the fuck he was just <laughs> talking about. <laughs> What are you talking about, man? I was just going to go over and they'd be like, hey, what are you doing specials? And then we'd leave. <laughs> so then <laughs> Pastor Jack shows up. Shane hasn't seen him in 600 years. He's like, hey, buddy. And the demons are like, you're not allowed to have friends in hell. And they start beating him up for taking a break. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I wanted them to start like hacking that rule and being like, just yelling friendly stuff, being like, do you like grilled cheese sandwiches also? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And tomato soup. Fuck you. I love that that's your go-to example of what a friend sounds That's what friends like. talk about. <laughs> Grilled cheese and tomato soup. Mm, I love bonjour. you. Welcome to Heath's seduction and friendship class. <laughs> in lesson one, you learned I saw you at orientation. Here in lesson two, we will cover do you like these foods? <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Master class. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> so now this is also, this is where we meet the Zodiac Killer. Typical. And it's, it's fucked up because the, the Zodiac Killer comes out and says, you know, I killed only, I've killed over 300 people in my life. And Shane's like, nah, nah. And he knows the exact number right off the top of his head. Very creepy. That's yeah. weird. Yeah. That's weird. I'm sorry, what was it? 47? It was 37. 30, 37, yeah. He's like, no, you only killed 37. He's like, D -d -d you know of. It okay. could be way more than that. Regardless of the number, I feel like that guy is like, well, at least I'm not a Republican senator from Texas. Yeah, Thank no. you. <laughs> <laughs> that meme made me look like an asshole. <laughs> uh, so, and it's by a way, Ted Cruz show. He's if worst. you were thinking at any point here that maybe the, like, the Columbine killers were a little too soon for them to be thrown in this movie... This is where we meet the Las Vegas shooter. This was made three fucking years after that happened, y'all. Was that hard on y'all here in Canada? <laughs> you keep an eye on our country masters' You guys have a lot of mass shootings. Is that a problem here? <sighs> they have to watch ours, like sports. They're like, oh, they did another one. Hun, America did another one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, we, we, we serve as a warning to Canada, I think, more than anything else. Don't elect yeah. Doug Ford. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. I'm doing nothing but Doug Ford jokes for the rest of the oh, show. Oh, no, I got, I got it. I get it. So, so no, speaking of, speaking of Doug Ford, this is the point where he says... Are you, but, okay, he's going for implying, he says applying, but he says, are you applying that I'm just as evil as a mass murderer putting me in here with a Las Vegas shooter? And they're like, yes. <laughs> we made a whole fucking movie about exactly that point. But this is where the movie does a little bit of a twist. Oh, is it? Yeah. We're going to say twist? Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, because this is where Shane starts to recognize the power of contrition. Yes. Because contrition gives hell demons diarrhea. <laughs> so, so you had that he looked like he was, like he had diarrhea. I had that he looked like he was angrily sucking a tiny invisible dick. Ooh. But I think both of those are equally accurate depictions. Well, no, I think he went for both. <laughs> I think he went for both, and those were his two space work things that he could think of. <laughs> and that was it. I had, this is like watching Heath watch Elizabeth Warren walk down some stairs. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Heath diarrhea is when he's enraged. <laughs> so Engorged. And hornied. Aroused! There we get. We found it. Oh. And then, I, I'm jealous of this movie because it can just skip ahead 20,000 years later whenever it wants. So, then the movie skips 20,000 years hence. And I gotta say, his khakis are holding up great for 20,000 years old, right? Well, 20,000... 21,000 years old, right, at this point. So he's, he's chatting with Pastor Jack about whatever happened to his Porsche 21,000 years ago. 
Where are they right now? They're in hell, but like they found a nice, like, secluded spot to relax and talk. I feel like in 20,000 years you find a nice secluded spot, right? I get, I don't know. It, it's hell, though. There's, <laughs> is there a concierge hell has desk a make with like point. hiking maps? Yeah. <laughs> right. Has a neck and corner. <laughs> So, and now apparently Pastor Jack gets to initiate flashbacks into Shane's yeah. life. He's like, oh, he's like, you know, I'm a good person. I shouldn't have gone to hell. And Pastor Jack's like, really? You remember that hot chick with a little fat corgi? And so we go back to hot chick with a little fat corgi. That's not your fault at that point. The corgi. Well, and I wrote in my notes. I'm like, he's going to lust after her in his heart, isn't he? And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he clarifies. He's like, but I never had sex with her. And the pastor's like, for some reason that doesn't count. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Which again always implies you should have fucked her, dude. Right. You should have fucked her and the corgi. It doesn't matter. You're here. <laughs> You're, you were gonna go to hell anyway. That's a good point. Also, the origin of this entire religion is when God knocked up a married lady. That's true. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. Married child. Thank you. So, well, I don't know about thank you, if that's the right word. Thank you's weird. Yes, that's thank you's weird. So, yeah, to be right. fair, he did announce it with good news. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't plan your quinceanera yet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, don't fuck me. That's not my fault. I didn't no, write that book. You, you did not write the book. Um, Pin the tail on the donkey. In the- so, <laughs> Manger. So then we, we, we cut to Shane in a casino, and this is such a weird-ass fucking thing to add an hour and 11 minutes into their movie. He's flirting with these two girls at a blackjack table, and his wife's sister's husband's friend saw him flirt with the girl and then told his wife about it, and now he feels bad about that. This is just being added to the movie again, an hour and 15 minutes in, like, ooh, 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 you know what else? The guy's genocidal. Why the fuck do we need an else? It matters none. I did enjoy that the, he's flirting with a woman, and she sees him win some hands of blackjack, but then he loses one hand of blackjack. He goes all in on blackjack. At That's one not point. a thing. That's not a thing. Yes, you could push all Put your chips in. Put it all in. on me. You wouldn't say all in. That's nothing. Yeah, man, that's how gambling works. It's not, you're not, you're, you don't bluff the dealer out. The dealer doesn't fold in blackjack. <laughs> oh, no, too rich for my blood. I'm the yeah. casino. Bye. <laughs> right. So stupid. We're going to get a braver dealer who will play against you. <laughs> One-eyed stew will take you on. <laughs> It was, yes, the dealer was Legion the Demon there. Thank you. I was worth interrupting our show for, exactly. Um, That's a make-a-wish, so kid. I, I, <laughs> that, was, that was his make-a-wish. You're welcome. Yes. Yep. Cancer sucks. He died just now. You can't hear it <laughs> at home, but he well, went, we got it. We squeezed it in. <laughs> Problem of evil, right? What are you going to do? I love this moment, too, because we get done with the little casino flashback. Shane goes, oh, I wish I could go back in time. And Pastor Jack goes, why? I I don't know, guy who's also in hell. Why the fuck do you think? You bet a lot of money on the Chicago Red Sox, too, huh? (laughs) Chicago Red Sox? I don't know, man. It were the joke played. Doug Ford. (laughs) Gifting economy. (laughs) You've come all the way around. Now it's just, yeah, he's, he's all catchphrases from this point out. Wallet in my peanut butter. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Thank you. So then we cut back, we go back Earthside, and remember now we've been doing like X number of days before hell. Now it comes up and it's like three hours before hell, and I'm like, guys, it's Zeno's movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're the ones in hell the whole time. This is never going to fucking end. That is genius if they actually did that. <laughs> if the, like, each scene got half Yeah, half a half second. <laughs> Well, we know that that their one day could last three days, so these three hours could go on for all of eternity, yeah. So, okay. 
So, yeah, we go back to three hours beforehand. He's chilling with his buddy from before, wondering why homeless people exist and suck. Out loud for the second time that day? <laughs> yes. Yup. Or the next business day? Yeah. I just want, I want to hear Michael's week, right? This friend who's just like, it was really fucking weird. Yesterday, he just like talked about how much he wanted to genocide homeless people. He gets into work and he's like, hey, boss, you ready to... So another thing about homeless people, like, ah, oh, God. Yeah. I got to update my LinkedIn. <laughs> Well, yeah, boy, doesn't he? Because Michael's like, hey, man, you know, you talk about genociding homeless people an awful lot. You want to come to um, to Bible study with me? And he goes, you're fired. <laughs> okay. Michael, you're fired. But that was the best response ever. It was. Ever. It was. <laughs> do you want to come to the Bible? You're fired. That's yes. correct. Well, That is what you do. Yes. If an employee, that's the correct answer. That's, that's the wet dream of a lot of this audience right, right yeah. now. So, but no, let's, let's be super clear, though. This is like the eighth time this character has said, do you want to go to my church and be my religion with me? Yes, you fire that motherfucker. That's the right thing to fucking do. Yeah, I bet in Canada you actually do fire that motherfucker. Yeah, don't you, you guys? Just like you fired Doug Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually they're going to find out I have no idea who that person is. <laughs> <laughs> and then, all right. So then we head back to his house where he and his wife are yelling at each other about being insufficiently Christian. She wants him to go to church. He has been to church three out of the last four fucking days in this movie. But she, he goes, I don't want to go to church. She goes, but we always go to church on Christmas Eve. I am ending this marriage. That's the next thing that happens. Yes, yes, but I'm sorry. I don't want to glaze over the fact that they just established in the middle of this scene at the end of all of this fucking movie that it's Christmas Eve? <laughs> yeah, right. It's never come up that this was the week of Christmas? Yeah. Seems like it would have come up. Okay. It's Christmas Eve on September 11th of 2001. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> Why did you add that into the movie? <laughs> There's an earthquake happening right now. Stop adding to the movie. So... <laughs> But yeah, but he hates Christianity and he hates Christmas and he hates Christmas Eve and he hates his wife and he wants to get divorced. Right? So yeah, divorce! Um, <laughs> Somebody's sitting there with her husband, isn't it? So, um, so he takes off his ring, he throws it away and he storms off. That will be divorced, by the way. Like an hour later, they'll be signing papers. Yeah, they're going on the Talak Talak system here in this movie. <laughs> I didn't say the third one because I love my wife. <laughs> Oh, right. So, and this is a great moment too because apparently they recognize that you you have to have this like you know everybody's like at the at the bottom now moment in the movie, right? So they show us all the named characters being sad, but they run out of characters, so they show us all the same characters being sad in the exact same they order. Do it twice. Yes, they, they had to have cuts. I feel like. Somebody, like, they all fucked up the idea, be sad for 10 seconds, man, just be sad. <laughs> and they did something crazy. And they had to cut and show them again for, like, five You seconds. know somebody was like, could we show one of the demons being sad? No! <laughs> Everybody hurts. <laughs> all right, so now we cut back to hell. It is now 50,000 years later. At this point, you fucked all the rocks. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. And Pastor Jack and Shane are sitting over in their little, like, necking corner or whatever. And they're like, hey, look, it's, it's weird. What's going on over there? And we look and we can't tell, right? But there's some kind of commotion going on in hell. We'll never find out what it is. <laughs> this is just, it's here for its own fucking sake. We're done with that now. It was Antifa. <laughs> This is also, I love this moment because he's, Shane's still bitching about his wife and how he should have listened to her. And oh, if only, only he could go back and do that, you know, whatever, point zero zero seven percent of his life over again. And at this point, Pastor Jack forgets mid carrying his rock to pretend that it's heavy. This is the worst it ever gets. <laughs> so. He gestures with it. Yeah. <laughs> Takes a sip out of it like a fine wine. <laughs> so. I'm going to put this inside of me. <laughs> but he says, he says at this point, he's like, you know, I feel terrible because I divorced my wife and she didn't want a penny. So I took all the money and then she got breast cancer and she died because <laughs> she couldn't afford the breast cancer medicine. 
friendless and alone. Yes. Right, but but he divorced her three hours before he died. So and and that's he threw the ring in the dish three hours before he died. So in that three hour period of time, on Christmas Eve. <laughs> These two individuals got all the way divorced to the point where they had settled who got what money, and then she got breast cancer and died. I feel like Andrew Torres was involved in that. (laughs) He was the lawyer for that one side that won. I got, well, I got my client all $70 million and uh, got his wife nothing but the breast cancer, so. (laughs) Andrew Torres, I'll give your wife breast cancer. (laughs) Andrew, I'm already making those business cards, just so you know. It's a website already. It's a website. It's a website. See, Andrew Torres will give your wife breastcancer.com. Eli doesn't use notes anyway, so he might as well use that computer for something. Dot coffee. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so he complains to, to Pastor Jack, and Pastor Jack tells him, look, man, it's not just about being the right religion, okay? It's about being the right denomination of right. that religion. No, it's not about being a good person, by the way. That is not where we go. You got to put that on, like, the cover of the Bible. It's just those two things. Yeah. It's like, repent, and I like Jesus. That's, a, that's the pinned tweet. Yes. You got to have that be the thing. That would be nice if the Bible would get to the fucking point. Yeah. So, okay. And then Shane tosses his, his rock into the lake of fire, but just then all of the bad guys, the, you know, Hitler and, and Mao Zedong and the Columbine killers, they all show up and they're like, you know, we've been planning this for apparently 61,000 fucking years. We're jumping you to death. Now, let's be fair to this movie. If the rest of this movie had just been Hitler, Mao Zedong, and the Columbine killers kicking the shit out of Shane. (laughs) This is my favorite movie! (laughs) They're already on my porn set. It's perfect. Yeah, right? So, yeah, so the, but, but they were going to beat him up, and, and they're just about to do it, and Legion shows up, and I feel like they have plenty of time to beat him up as he's landing, but they don't. <laughs> he lands. He's like, Legion, I have one last request. Shane is. He's like, I, I remember there's a loophole in the Bible where I get to talk to my wife because Lazarus was dead, and he got to talk to somebody, too. Like a phone call. Yeah. Like you get what, and the demon has to be like, Technically, yep. <laughs> we do have that one simple trick <laughs> yes. in hell. And he has to let him talk to his wife. Yeah. But he doesn't have to let his wife hear him, which is great. That's actually that's pretty good. Go, Legion. Right? He's like, all right, if you bow down and worship me, I'll let you talk to your wife. And he does. He's like, okay. He bows down, he worships him. And he's like, all right, you can talk to her. She's not going to fucking hear you, though. We also we get a <laughs> shot of the wife in heaven at yes. this point. And a movie that has spent an hour and 40 minutes on hell is like, what's heaven like? It is. It is. She's in a green field. She spins around twice. And then she stands there and she's like, I don't know anything else joyous to do. And the director's like, just spin around again. It's okay. It's just... <laughs> You know what, listeners? I'm just going to say that Eli made a blowjob fountain gesture and let you just decide on your own what he said. What he she was good did. for 35 years. It's her time. <laughs> yeah. And then, sorry, I have to scroll way down on my notes. I was hoping somebody else would have a joke while I was doing that. <laughs> and then, Doug Ford. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, it's Boo now. That's yeah, you, yeah you gotta... Boo Heath when he says Doug Ford because yeah. he's for Doug Ford. Why would Why? you do that? Why, Heath? Why would you say that? Unbelievable. <laughs> Jordan Pearson. Yeah, you didn't I know. I did it backwards. Fuck. No. Michael J. Fox. Don Ford. There you go. All right. Michael J. Fox was the big, because they were like, he's Canadian. Really? The Back to the Future guy. All right. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Leonard Cohen. So. Okay. I found one. All right. Ryan Reynolds. There you go. There yes, you go. There is. All right. How did you guys like the Game Live show? <laughs> he named Canadian people as best he could for like a minute. <laughs> so, 
That was the show. <laughs> well, it, it's going to end better than this stupid fucking movie because then <laughs> Shane wakes up on the beach and it was all a fucking dream. And yeah, right, the movie is like, really? That's the best, we did, we, that's, that's like the example of a dumb ending though, isn't it? A 60,000 year long dream. Yes, yes. <laughs> How great would it be if he woke up completely insane from 60,000 years of torture though? Right, right, like in uh, Inception or whatever after the unconstructed dream space bit, sure. Yeah, and of course, he's like, wait, I'm alive? I can turn my life over to Jesus Christ now? Hooray! And he out yells the microphone and they keep it because they don't fucking know. What day is it? Yes, <laughs> young boy. A little Victorian kid just shows up on the beach. It's Christmas, sir! It's not too late. It literally technically is Christmas <laughs> it based on our movie. Uh, in this stupid movie. This movie fucking blows, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Noah made fun of me at the live show and I died. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, wait, wait, my wife's alive? And everybody else is like, I mean, the last time we fucking saw her, dude, what the hell did you do? And he goes, she's alive. And, they're, and they all go, well, of course she's alive. Again, quote in the movie, your lawyer just spoke to her. You know, about your one-hour Christmas Eve divorce. <laughs> Andrew Torres, one-hour Christmas Eve divorce. <laughs> Dot com. Breast cancer not included. So It's an add-on, like it's legal Zoom. If you want the thing, you got to push the button, and he'll also give you breast cancer. There you go. So, so he runs to his car. Apparently, they only had the Porsche for the weekend because he's not in that anymore. He's in a vet. The vet's nice. It's a nice vet. And then he pulls, oh, they, don't, they also don't have the porn house anymore. Yes. No, Brazzer's got the mansion back. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so now they're at fucking Kevin Sorbo's house in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's mom's condo. Yeah. yeah. No, it's also very nice. It's got a porch all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> so he runs in. By the way, this guy is running like a baby deer. That's still trying to figure out how all these legs work at the same time. He runs like a man who's going to say, on your left, when he jogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, he, and, and his wife is like, Shane, what are you doing here? And it's like, it's been two hours since you saw him. <laughs> you haven't seen me for 60,000 years. <laughs> I really wanted Michael to come out of the shower drying his hair. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> I mean, given the speed everything move, what moves in this movie's universe, that would have made a lot of sense. She's like, you know what? I finally signed those divorce papers you wanted me to sign that you've been, I wasn't going to do it, but you talked to me. It's been two hours. You weren't locked into this. You didn't inherit this movie with that having only been two hours. You could have made it months ago or weeks ago if you chose to. Again, as we say so often, you're the fucking movie. If someone signs the divorce papers you gave them faster than they can watch Dune, it's not going to work out. <laughs> But of course, he doesn't want the divorce paper anymore, so he crumbles them up and throws them away. All that work that Andrew did. We don't even Except give a shit. the breast cancer, well, which we yes. assume she will still get. <laughs> <laughs> she crumples up the breast cancer. <laughs> Red dye number five. <laughs> that was a Canadian joke, because you don't have it. It's fine. Okay. And then. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Later. And you know what? As you're editing this out, don't! So, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't edit out the ones that die like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> and there's a red die number five activist in our I audience. Have, who's... I ha I have a whole supercut of those. <laughs> it's called God Awful Movies. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So now, okay, we cut to him at church. So now five of the last six days he's been at church. I guess it's Christmas. It makes sense. And Shane answers the altar call. His wife is so sad, proud. 
He starts like falling down too soon, right? He starts bowing down. He's falling down in the middle of the aisle and has to kind of scoot forward. It's a ton of fun. He starts trying to fly like Legion. <laughs> Flat. All right. Be a second. But now we have to have the like the post Scrooge moment, right? So we have to see him being nice to everybody. He go he gives the Porsche to to Michael. I wanted Michael to go. It's got a big fucking dent in it, man. I don't want that. <laughs> the registration sticker's been stored on. I'm not just you. You're trying to pawn this shit off on me. I want the bet. He gives the homeless guy a job offer. Yes. I really wanted the homeless guy to be like, "Wow, man, they oh you you have blackout dates on your time off, huh?" <laughs> I got a lot of money from the government for COVID. And again, I don't want to work. Because this movie is halfway between good person and Republican and its goals or whatever, he doesn't offer the homeless guy a home, right? Or money. This guy's got 11 fucking cars. He can't give the guy a few fucking dollars. No. no. He's he offers like, work him, for it. He offers him a job. For minimum wage, like a Wonka ticket. He yes. prints it out. Yes, he printed it out. It says, like, one job. <laughs> also, <laughs> like, what? he's like a financial money guy. So what, the right. homeless guy's going to show up Monday and be like, I think we should sell the stocks and buy <laughs> some other ones. <laughs> Are you guys done with those pants you're wearing? <laughs> Mine have paint on them. <laughs> Statistically, he does as well as the hedge fund people. You're, like, fair, yeah. you're right. You're right. You're right. So yeah. So he. So he. Ugly. Shane ugly cries at God a little bit after being nice, and then we get the wrap up. He and and Hannah are enjoying a long walk down the beach, and he says, "You know, thank God it was all a dream." But just then, Legion and the smacky demon with the bad English accent <laughs> walk by without their kiss makeup on, the, and they go like, "Or was it?" But I love that from the wife's perspective, he just sees two young, handsome surfers walk by, and he's like, thank God it was all a... Mm. <laughs> it was like that meme where he's... Yeah, yeah, right. I wanted Hannah, the wife, to leave with the two of them and be like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's it. She Bible quotes Adam, and that's the end of the movie. So I have to ask... And you would think as heavy-handed as, as this movie's been that it would be obvious. I don't think it is. What is the moral of this story? Oh, it's do literally whatever you want and then pray for heaven at the end and you're fucking fine. Okay. All right. Uh, you can give a demon diarrhea with a self-roast. Okay. That's a more important moral. All right. Moral. No, that is a good one. I was, I was going to go with it. We implied this earlier. If you're going to go to hell anyway, you should do evil enough shit that the demons are super impressed and they'll yeah. promote you right away. And dress like Sting right before you die. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and dress for it. By all means, dress in something comfortable when you're going to die. You'll be wearing that for 60,000 years. Rock lifting clothes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, normally I have to do the whole big outro thing. I think you guys already know that this is copyrighted and all that. And we already talked about how awesome Morgan Clark and Tim Robertson, Lucinda and Anna and Andrew and Andrew and all those people are. So. We will spare you that big block of text ending that I normally do and simply say thank you so much, Toronto. We love you back, and we will leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. Eli just needed to watch another 59,000 years of Supernatural, and he'd be right on board. <laughs> the homeless guy only realized after the credits that Shane's job offer was being hunted for sport. Okay, this is serious. On behalf of every American with a uterus, will you marry us? Thank you so much. Thanks again for coming out. The contest is happening live as we speak. Heath's trying to scroll down in time. Eli's trying to scroll down in time. I'm there first. Oh, that's the better hell bed. Fuck. What's it doing there? I put it at the beginning. Where, why, did it, why is it no longer at the beginning? You bastard. Where did you did put you it? Did you move it? Heath has moved the, the ad to the middle of our <laughs> notes. <laughs> it's the perfect crime. Morgan, can you edit this? Yeah. Is it even, it's not even on there. Oh, it's gone. Where the hell is it? I think I labeled the first one wrong. It's not a better help ad. Yeah, it's the it's where you are, okay. Noah. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right we're...
I was there first. Okay, all right, I was there first. Don't worry, this all comes all right. out in the edit. Yeah, so <laughs> this is going to be a great time to tell you what a great job Morgan does. Are you really? Are you guys really going to make me introduce you again? <laughs> He's then right in Eli Bosnick. <laughs> and we're back. I make you introduce me on a C segment of our recorded podcast. Yes, you do. <laughs> I guess it should have been explained. I was afraid that if I introduced you again, you'd be half naked when you came out again. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. You heard two people. Ow, I heard the 198 that didn't. Okay. <laughs> they were just afraid. Afraid of what was inside them. <laughs> well, they were afraid of what was inside somebody anyway. Yeah. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. We want students to know that if they go to Kent State, they have the world a la carte as an opportunity for them to develop a true global perspective.